silent in the clearing. <laughs> Hello? Bigfoot? Bigfoot? Are you there, my old friend? Yeah. <laughs> right this way. Both speak in posh accents. Perhaps Bigfoot affects the aristocratic tones of this story. <laughs> You don't get any hunters or spotters out here? Close into the cities, sometimes. But rare is the hunter that will come out this far. To tell you the truth, this is the calmest I've had since the 50s. Well, that's wonderful. You deserve the rest. Maybe you can finally settle down with a nice cryptid. Perhaps that's in the cards. <laughs> and I have you been. It's been far too long since I've last seen you. Yes, well, with the current geopolitical climate being what it is, it is rather difficult to make it to America. And stewing away on ships isn't what it used to be. One can just hide in cargo bays now with our CC cameras everywhere. Yeah. So that's been an issue for myself as well. You know the fun we used to get up to raiding convenience stores off the highway? But now it's virtually impossible. If security cameras were the only issue, I'd, I, security cameras were the only issue, I wouldn't be so worried. The quality's low enough that I'd be a smudge on the screen. But these infernal smartphones these humans all carry around with them these days, they're enough to send any self-respecting cryptid into hiding. When we were young, it was us frightening the humans. But now, with every mortal carrying a camera, I've been forced into the shadow. And that, my old friend, is why I prefer the Himalayas. <laughs> Less developed countries are prime stalking grounds. Although now, thanks to our American tourists with their flashy gear and cameras, I have been almost entirely driven off of the Everest and every other tourist trap of the peak in the whole range. Oh, oh now, it, is it really that bad? Well, I suppose I have free range above the base camps. That high, I've dropped up to oxygen deprived hallucination. <laughs> but then that's no fun, is it? If I'm in the same class as unicorns and talking bears, I might as well not be there at all. <laughs> so for the best, I suppose, I've been letting the humans alone for the most part, focusing on my hunting. And truly, I've been off the human track lately, too. Even when they don't have their, their noses and screens, I find that they're much more obtuse these days. They used to panic, scream and run, but now they just stand there staring. If you want some good screaming, you have to go after the harpies. Heavens, do those bird ladies scream. I've got a little vacation cave in Greece, and whenever I take a week or so there, I spend the whole time hunting harpies. They're a real delicacy, especially raw. You rip into them. Your teeth shearing through flesh and bone indiscriminately. The blood drips down your chest. It stains your fur. Never felt more alive. Oh, this sounds delightful. I'll have to make my way over to Europe one of these days. I've been so busy with the fair stateside that I haven't been traveling much these past few years. Well, if you want to hunt harpies, you best make a trip soon. The Mythic Council is considering granting them personhood, which would make killing them a capital offense. How awful! Surely you jest? The council's really considering that. But they've been haunted for centuries. Yes, well, that's just the problem. They sent out word on Monday that all the killings make them a historically oppressed group. Can you imagine? Even said they're entitled to special protection. Oh, Lord, if 
anyone's been oppressed, it's us. The councils have, the councils hell bent on taking every one of our hunting rights away. What I would do to go over there and buy up one of their heads. Here I'd be the first one to stand behind you, big. As long as you let me take care of Chimera. She's had it out for me ever since I sold some Pegasus meat to a buddy of mine. It's the most succulent, powerful meat on the market, and it goes for a pretty penny. But the council still insists on banning it for international trade. Why? Just ridiculous. <laughs> you know, killing a Pegasus has been on my bucket list for years now. I just want the wings for trophies. But if you take me to some nesting grounds and help me kill one, you can certainly keep the meat. Well, that sounds like a fine plan. Would you help me smuggle it back to the mountains? I need the rock salt to cure it properly. Of course! Of course! <laughs> and if the council has anything to say about it, well, they'll have both of us to do with it. <laughs> Capital, my friend, you really do have excellent ideas. You think so? I certainly do. <laughs> That's good to hear. Well, let's get down to business, shall we? I actually invited you here today to discuss a proposal. Oh, do tell. Oh, well, I've been thinking. Life isn't easy for us critics. No peace between the humans haunting us and the mythic council regulating us. No luxury. We, we can't buy a house or even a condo or an apartment. Never a home-cooked meal to eat. If we dine in a restaurant, we had better do it fast before the police arrive. Not even the simplest luxuries. No peace and quiet. Nowhere to relax. Clearly, there's a need to be filled. And I think we can do that with a spa. A spa? <laughs> I thought it could be something us cryptids might like from time to time. A mani pedi. Get your fur shampoo. Wash the bristle out from between your teeth. A massage to work the hiding from humans related stress out of your shoulders. <laughs> My friend Ellen lives in Iceland. You know her in the yoga. And she says, the hot springs there are so perfect, even the humans built a spa. I thought, us cryptids deserve something nice too. My old friend, you're a genius. <laughs> Why, I don't know a single cryptid who wouldn't stop by. You know how Capybara gets. Drinking goat's blood isn't exactly a clean business. And I also met Mothman on the way here. And he's been living in the sewers of New York for years. Can't seem to get the stench out of his wings, never mind the stains. As for our lake monster friends, I like Nessie. Well, they're only cleaned, but who couldn't use a good massage? Oh, Yeti, I'm so glad. You and your words make it sound so grand. Which is why I want to ask you to go into business with me. I'm good with the practical side of things, but the way you handle your PR over the years is just marvelous. I mean, you even appeared at Christmas movies. You, you're lovable but fearsome. Part of the public consciousness, but still living under the radar. It's incredible, frankly. <laughs> well, thank you, my dear. <laughs> I'm no magic worker. But such a wonderful idea should be easy to promote. But before I agree, let's talk some logistics. Certainly. First off, as economically disadvantaged, disadvantaged as some of us cryptids are by being completely unable to participate in the economy, how would one pay for the services of said spa? A fair point. But I think most among us could provide beasts or precious metal for payment. All right. Very good. What a staffing. Oh, well, I hadn't thought it through quite that far. It's a good thing I'm here, old friend. <laughs> How about captured humans? <laughs> yes. They could also serve as middlemen for any spa-related goods we need to purchase from the humans. My one concern with that is escapees. I can see it already. One measly mortal escapes, and a week later, the mob comes knocking down our door with more racing. A chupacabra has hairballs. You said you're looking at an Icelandic location? Then I wouldn't worry about it. 
overmuch. It's such an underpopulated small country. Why, mildew would be more of a problem than moths. And honestly, who would want to believe some scrawny mortal saying they've been living in a world run by monsters? I mean, no one wants to hear that. <laughs> I suppose I'll have to trust you on that one, Yeti. The only other option I can think of is higher mythics, and that's just an appealing. Agreed. Agreed. Well then, <laughs> shall we shake on it? Before we do, I have one last concern. I'm sure it won't be an issue, but just in case. <laughs> well, out with it. What would the policy on non-cryptids be, mythics specifically? Why not allowed, of course. Oh. Thank heavens. I know you never prefer to serve myths mythics, but the money that they could provide could be appealing. I suppose. But I'm glad your morals are staunch. They certainly are, Yeti. Now I feel I can pour my whole heart into this business. Oh, the run-ins I've had lately with mythics have been just awful. I'd rather never see one again. Yes, the mythic council certainly has been, uh, it hasn't been kind to you of late. Even beyond that, every mythic I've met over the past few decades has been god-awful to me. They're rude, they don't respect us cryptids like they should, they make the laws, and we get no say. We're crushed under their paws, despite our power, never given the respect we deserve, just because we're not magical. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Yeti, were you thinking that it would be only cryptids? No exceptions? Well, isn't that what you just said? Well, certainly no mythics. I agreed with you on that. However, there are some fellow creatures who I don't suppose will be such bad company. Really? And what such creatures did you have in mind? Uh, well, uh, the Lady of the Lake, for one. Oh, why? <laughs> you see, she was actually the one who gave me the idea for the spa. I think we get good business from her. I didn't know you socialized with her type. I haven't for a while now. We uh, used to cook ages and ages back. It was just to hop across the pond, as they say, over to England to see her. I met her on a trip uh, to visit the Beast of Exmoor, an honest trip, through and through. And he introduced us. She was quite kind. Mm, yes. Oh, friend, I can understand that. She's a beautiful woman, but a mistake of your youth, yes. Why did you <laughs> say that? Well, I mean, isn't she a bit... Oh, how do I put this politely? Isn't she a bit... Folkloric for you. <laughs> <laughs> now, listen here. Just because she was canonized in the Arthurian legends doesn't mean she's mythological. Yes, I, I do believe that's exactly what it means. <laughs> I think you don't still have feelings for her, do you? No, no, of course not. But what if I do? <laughs> She's a little better than a nymph or a naiad. <laughs> it's true. She's not like us, you know. She helps the humans. She's almost part of their world. She hasn't talked to a mortal for centuries Doesn't now. Does that change anything? She's still, it's still in her nature. If you're worried about being revealed to humans, she's more likely than any mortal. You never even met her. No, but I know her type. <laughs> She may not be a true mythic, but her sympathies lie with them, and that's even worse. Now you listen here, you... <coughs> Hunters! I thought you said I haven't even seen them. Well, I'm getting the hell out of here. It's not saying if you've closed my script too soon. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about the spa, Big, but we'll chat later. 